Hi everyone, so I want to show you how to make this cardigan with me today. Okay, so this, I call this, this is my blush cardigan. Uh, real pretty, as you can see right here. So this one is an ombre, and if you can see, it has a pattern running over the shoulder, all the way down, it might be a little bit hard to see because of the color. And it has uh, seven stripes of the same pattern running all the way around like you can see right here so it is um, not the easiest cardigan to make I cannot say that uh, if you're a very very beginner this might not be the cardigan for you I would try a few uh, making a few other cardigans before I would give this one a go okay so I have this this is in color ombre and I actually have the cardigan that I actually make in this video, so this is the one that I make. Now I had to go back and uh, do the beginning of this video again because I forgot to say a few things. So one of the things I forgot to say is that how much yarn we're gonna need. So as these cardigans will go from from about uh, one year old to five, six, depending on yarn, the two smaller sizes, the ones that I had there, that was uh, for a one-year-old, this is for a one-and-a-half-year-old. So I have used up 150 grams or one-and-a-half of the little cakes that I will show you later on of the, of the yarn. So about 200 grams for the smaller sizes, you might need more for the bigger ones. Okay, and the second thing I forgot to say that, so you will see this cake in the video. I have used it up. Uh, so I did a little bit of color control on the cake. I didn't just let the colors go all crazy and everything. I did them in the front, just so you know uh, if you're going to get the same yarn that I use right here because it is a beautiful cardigan. Just so you know that uh, if you don't cut your yarn and start another one, it is not going to look exactly the same. Other than that, you don't really have to use uh, this yarn. This is a fine yarn, I believe. I have this cardigan in DK or lightweight free. This is how it looks. It's the same cardigan. It only uh, has a little tie in the front. And I have it in a much bigger size. It's only missing uh, buttons. I'm sorry. I'm still waiting for those beautiful buttons to come. This is for my daughter. And this one is made with Aran yarn or weight four yarn. So. Yarn weight is not a problem for this cardigan. This cardigan can be done in any of them. Okay, uh, I have talked a lot now and we can get started. These are some of the things that we are going to need. So a darning needle. We are going to need scissors. Uh, we're going to need buttons depending on how many buttonholes uh, you are going to do. And if you're going to do the two side buttons to hold the little uh, belt or, or the little strap. So I have six. I'm planning on making four buttonholes and I'm going to have two buttons for the sides. And I haven't made up my mind yet which ones I'm going to use. So I have uh, two sets here. Then we're going to need seven stitch markers. Uh, seven because we are going to do seven stripes of the pattern in the bottom of the cardigan. And we are just going to need to mark these out. And then one of the most important things in uh, making this cardigan, it is a measuring tape. So I have one, just a very simple one with centimeters on one side and inches on the other side. Uh, but I'm going to use centimeters because I am used to them. This is the yarn that I'm going to use. So this is Ice Yarns and it is a uh, fine weight yarn. So 100 grams, about 360 meters. Uh, it is a little bit thin, but if you want uh, the smaller size that you want to make, the thinner yarn you have to use. So I wouldn't go any thinner than this, but I have made these cardigans in lightweight free yarn, which is DK. Uh, and I have made it in Iran yarn, which is weight for yarn as well but you have to have in mind that the thicker the yarn the bigger your cardigan will have to be because our pattern for this cardigan the yoke the starting chains uh, are demanding for uh, quite a big um, quite many chains on the both sides which I will get you through this but uh, you will not be able to make it in baby size unfortunately so anything from about 
up to uh, from one year old maybe nine to twelve months uh, with thinner yarn uh, to about five or six or seven even years uh, although my uh, measurement chart is uh, the biggest size that I have is five to six years but you can find all the charts on Pinterest or Google or th there's loads of them so this is the yarn that I'm going to use and I have used uh, this yarn uh, the ombre for my orange cardigan so this is how it looks like and it's exactly the same as that one only the coloring is different okay so uh, and then the two hooks so my yarn recommends 3.5 to 4 millimeter hook uh, I have uh, I'm gonna use 4 millimeter hook for the whole cardigan and three and a half millimeter hook just for the last row of the sleeve just to take in uh, take it in slightly and the last thing that I want to show you is my me measurement chart so this is what I use all the time if you are not happy with this and you cannot understand the thing that I'm saying about centimeters or something uh, as I said you can find them on Google and Pinterest they are you know you can find them in inches easily okay so the measurements that we're going to need is the head circumference the chest for the finished cardigan you see here it says finished yoke then we're gonna need a uh, back neck to waist uh, sleeve length and upper sleeve so these are the measurements and as you can see here are the sizes so uh, the smallest that I got to make in fine yarn was 9 to 12 months and upwards so this is the smallest I, I was not able to make them any smaller uh, as I said uh, before so this is a chart and then we get to this now I don't want to scare anybody but it looks much more complicated than it really is um, I will get you through this it is not that difficult I just needed to make sure that everybody understand what it is so this is our neckline for the cardigan so it is an overlap as you can see here the two fronts will be longer than the back so it will be overlapping uh, then these are the sides and this is how we're going to insert our pattern on the sleeve and well I'm gonna talk about this a little bit um, a little bit more once we start the cardigan so uh, if you're very 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 beginner this might be a little bit difficult for you but uh, if you have made cardigans before and maybe perhaps even if you are interested to see how I insert uh, patterns on cardigans and how I work everything out so you might like uh, to watch this so uh, I think we can get started on it now okay so first of all if you have grab a piece of paper it's always easier to write everything down so you have it in front of you okay so first of all you decide what size you are making so I will be making this time 18 to 24 months I'm just gonna write that down 18 to 24 months so this is the size so as you can see all the other sizes okay the first measurement that we are going to need for the starting chain is the head circumference so whichever size you are making look up the head circumference so I'm making this size it is 48 centimeters for me I'm gonna write down right here 48 centimeters so now what we're going to do whichever how many ever centimeters you have you're gonna minus three centimeters from that and I'm going to have 45 centimeters left and I am going to aim that my starting chain is about 45 centimeters long or a little bit shorter you will uh, you are most likely not to get the exact uh, length but you just need to find the closest one um, so I'm not trying to confuse you now okay so any of the head circumferences for any of the age that you are making minus three centimeters and write that down this is the length of our starting chain now if anybody uh, wants to have a better look at um, at my 
chart here, the size chart that I have. I'm going to post pictures of this on my Facebook and I will leave a link below if you want to have a better look. Okay, so I know the length of my starting chain. Now, so I don't confuse you, I'm going to go step by step. And first of all, see those numbers in pink. This is the amount of chains that we're going to make for starting chain and we will measure that. After that, we're going to do a little bit of adding to it to make the overlap in the front, but we will measure the amount of chains in the pink. So 55, 59, 67, 71, 79 and 83, whichever amount of these chains is the closest to that length when we are going to measure that will be your yoke. You will have to write everything down if you if you have a piece of paper and we will start off from there. So first of all, uh, so we can find out which of these numbers is for us. I'm gonna put down my measuring tape like this. Oops, sorry. And I'm going to start chaining. I'm gonna make a slip knot. And I'm gonna, going to start chaining and I'm going to stop at 55 and measure my chain. I'm just gonna start with the smallest size and see if I am at my 45 centimeters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I will keep going until I have 55 chains. I have my 55 chains. I'm starting with the smallest one and I will see where I am at. I'm going to put the first chain at the very beginning of my measuring tape. I'm going to turn it around and I'm just going to pull on it a tiny little bit, just a little bit. So I am at about 35 centimeters right here and I need to be much closer to 45. So this is way too short. I'm gonna go for the next uh, size, so 59. I need to add four chains and I'm quite sure that this is not going to be enough. Two, three, and four. I'm gonna measure that. I'm at about 38, 39 centimeters, still too short. I'm gonna go for 67. So I need another eight chains now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. So I'm going to measure that again. I'm going to put my first chain at the very beginning of my measuring tape. And if I pull it just a tiny little bit, I am at about 43 and a half, 44 centimeters, depending on how much I pull in it. This is very close to my 45 centimeters that I need. So I am going to stick with this size. So I have 67 chains at the moment. So this is a way you find out the starting chain. So 55, 59, 67, and you measure to the length that you need. And then once you know it, we can all get started. Okay. So I have, I have 60, 67 chains. I'm just going to write that down. 67 chains. So at the moment, my cardigan, my yoke is not an overlapping yoke. So I'm going to add six chains to it. So I make that overlap. So I'm going to have a free chain overlap in one side. So this is plus free. This, this is more and the same again on the other side plus free. So it is overlapping in the front. So we add, everybody now needs to add six chains to, to whatever we have. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so the next thing that we need to figure out is we are just going to write down uh, these numbers. So we have one chain for each corner. 
Then we I have 11 for the sides. You might have different numbers. So I have, uh, sorry, I have 13 for the side here. I have 19 in the back of the cardigan. And what I have in the front is 12. This is already, I have added the overlap to, to, to these numbers here. So I'm just going to have 12 in one side and 12 in the other side. That is the two fronts. Okay, so now we are going to have a look, whichever size that you are making, have a look into those blue little numbers that are inside of that blue around. So I have number one. You might have zero if you're uh, if you got the smaller sizes. So zero, zero. I have one. There's one on the next size and two and two. And write that down. So that number right here, that one that I have, you might have zero or you might have two or you might have one, depending on which yoke you've got. Now that number is the amount of double crochets that we are going to do after the corner before we start the pattern right here so the pattern the here takes up 11 chains so as i have 13 here i will have one double crochet after each corner right here before i start the pattern if you have zero what you are going to do is you are going to make the corner, you're going to finish the corner and you're going to start making the pattern on the sleeve straight away. You are not going to have any double crochets after the uh, corner. If you have two here, you're going to have two double crochets and then you're going to start the pattern, which I will um, explain everything after that. So at the moment, uh, it suddenly got very bright. Sorry about that. I have a uh, storm Ellen outside my window, so it might be the lighting might be changing a little bit in the video. Okay, so hopefully you understand what I'm talking about right now. So I have everything written down. I have 12 for the front, I have one corner, then I'm gonna have one double crochet, and I'm going to do the pattern which takes up 11 of the chains here. Then I'm going to have one double crochet and the corner again. 19, I have the back of the cardigan, corner, and it's exactly the same right here on the other sleeve. And then corner and 12 in the front again. Okay, so now I, I'm going to put this down. I hope you have written down whatever number you got and the yoke. So, okay. So I have uh, added my six chains and we have to add one more. So add one more right now, yarn over, skip the first two uh, chains. So I'm going to skip one and I'm going to skip two. Into the third chain from the hook, I'm going to make a double crochet like that. So those two chains, you can see here right now, they count as one double crochet. And I have 12 here for the overlapping front. So I have two, go into the next chain, three, four, five, six, seven and keep going until you have that number of double crochets right here i have 12 double crochets this number right here so after that it is a corner so into the next chain i'm gonna make a double crochet i'm gonna chain two one and two and i'm gonna make a double crochet back into the same chain where the previous double crochet is. So this is how our corners are going to look like, like that. So now, okay, so this is where we are going to start inserting the two fans and the double crochet in between them. So this is where the little number comes in, the one that was in the blue. So if you do not, if you have a zero right here 
okay? You don't make any double crochets here. You just skip the two chains and start your fan into the third chain. I have one double crochet before I start my pattern. So I'm going to make one double crochet into the next chain. Okay, if you have two, you make another one. And now I am going to start my first fan. I'm going to skip two chains right here and into the third chain. I am going to put a double crochet. So double crochet, chain one. Put another double crochet back into the same chain. Chain one and the third double crochet into the same chain space like this so you have a double crochet chain one double crochet chain one and a double crochet in the same chain so yarn over skip two chains skip one and two and into the third one make one double crochet so this is the very very middle of our shoulder now we're gonna do another fan so we're gonna yarn over we're gonna skip two chains skip one skip two into the third chain i'm gonna make a double crochet chain one double crochet into the same chain chain one and a double crochet so this is the pattern that is going to be on our shoulder Okay, so now again, the little number that you have. So if you have zero, you are just going to skip two chains and straight away make a corner into the third chain. I have one double crochet. You might have two, doesn't matter. So the amount of double crochets, we put it here. So we're gonna skip one chain. We're gonna skip two chains into the third chain. I'm gonna put my one double crochet before the corner if you have two you need to put one more into the next one so this is how it looks so far okay so i have made this whole side and i have a corner again so into the next chain i make a double crochet chain two and a double crochet into the same chain Next is the back part. So I have 19 double crochets for the back. I'm gonna yarn over, start counting from the next chain. So one double crochet, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm gonna keep going until I have 19 double crochets made. Made my back, my 19 double crochets right here, and then I have a corner again. So a double crochet, chain two, and a double crochet back into the same chain, just like that then I have the other over the shoulder part so exactly as we did here we're gonna do the same on the other side so whichever number you had in the blue uh, make that if you had a zero then you get to skip two chains straight away I had one so I make one double crochet into that next chain straight after the corner and again I'm gonna skip two chains into the third I'm gonna make my fan double crochet chain one double crochet chain one and a double crochet into the same chain yarn over skip two chains into the third one you're gonna make a, a double crochet yarn over and again skip two chains make a double crochet 
chain one, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. Then skip two chains and I had one, so I'm gonna do one double crochet. If you had corner, if you had zero here, just make the corner straight away. But I had one, so made that. Into the next chain, I make my corner. Double crochet, chain two and a double crochet. And if I have not made any mistakes anywhere, I should have 12 double crochets left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So, our row one looks a bit like this. Okay, so we don't need these anymore. Now we were only going to follow the stitches. Okay, so our every row from now on is going to start with one chain. So I'm going to chain one, just chain that loosely. Uh, so it's not pulling on the double crochet that we're going to make now. So a loose chain one, turn around and make a double crochet back into the very, very first stitch where the chain one is coming out of. So double crochet. And now we just make one double crochet in each stitch until we get to our first corner. So I have one stitch left over this double crochet from the previous row. I'm going to make a double crochet on top of that. Then in the chain two space right here, I'm going to make a double crochet, chain two, and a double crochet back into the same chain two space. So this is just a corner. Now we are on the side or over the shoulder or the sleeve, whichever way you like to call it. And we all might have different amount of double crochets right here. So there will be, it will be increasing. This part will be increasing all the time. So we will have more and more double crochets as we keep going. So I have two right here before my first fan. So I'm just gonna make one double crochet into each of these double crochets. So now if you have a look, you can see very clearly that this stitch right here is coming out of the fan. So we're gonna skip that. We're gonna skip the space right here after the first double crochet of the fan. And we're gonna make another fan into that middle double crochet, just on top of that. So one, two, three in, on top of the middle one. Right here, we're gonna make double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. So an, a fan on top of a fan. Then we need to find that one double crochet that was in between them. So this is that, and this is the stitch. Make one double crochet on top of that, like this. And then again, we find the top of that next fan, so the middle double crochet right here. And I'm gonna make double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Then I find those stitches before my corner. So I have two, you might have three or you might have one. I just happen to have two. And I make one on top of each of those two that I had. So as you can see, this is done. 
Then I have my space right here for the chain two and I make my corner into the middle of those. Chain two and double crochet. Now I'm just gonna follow the stitches and make one double crochet into each double crochet from the previous row until I get to the next corner. So I'm just gonna keep doing this. I am at the end of my back part of the cardigan and I have again, I have one stitch left right here. I'm going to make a double crochet into that. Then I'm going to go straight into that under those chain two and make a corner. And then again, I'm starting the other side of my shoulder. I have two double crochets here before my fan. I make one double crochet into each of them. Then I start my fan in the middle stitch in the top of that. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. Find that one double crochet in between those fans and make a double crochet on top of that. Then my next fan and I make a fan on top of that. Again, I find the double crochets after I finish my fan. So I have two right here. Make one double crochet on top of each of those two. Corner, chain two, and a double crochet back in there. Now at the end of this row, we are gonna make our buttonhole. So we need to get to the third last double crochet. And it might be a little bit difficult to see. I just need to get there and I will show you everything. Okay, so I'm nearly there. So at the very, very end of this row, we have the chain two uh, from the previous, from the very first row, and we counted that as a stitch. So we will have the last stitch in the top of that chain. So that's one double crochet will be here. This is going to be our second last. So this is the last double crochet, this is the second last. So this here, third, stitch from the back is go is uh, where my buttonhole is going to be so i'm gonna put one more double crochet right here i'm gonna skip that third last stitch so i'm gonna chain one skip over that go into the second last and i'm just going to do one more double crochet into the top of that chain two so this is the first chain this is the top chain I'm going to make a double crochet right here. So this is my buttonhole. Now it is quite important not to forget making them. You can make them as close or as far as you like. Uh, I am going to have five uh, double crochet rows in between each um, buttonhole. I will keep reminding you of, that, of them because it is very, very easy to forget and then it is very annoying to take a lot of the cardigan out just to make a buttonhole uh, there so buttonhole okay so row number three it, it is going to be a repeat row now so we're gonna chain one loosely turn around I'm gonna make a double crochet back in here back into the same stitch where the chain one is coming out of I'm gonna make a double crochet over the next double crochet and then I have my chain one from the buttonhole I'm just gonna go under that chain one and keep making double crochets until I come to my corner. I'm at the corner and I make double crochet, chain two and a double crochet back in the same 
chain two space. So remember I had two double crochets in the previous row. This time I have one, two and three and I just make one double crochet onto, on the top of each double crochet from the previous row right here. So you can see where the fan is starting. This is the first double crochet from the fan. We're gonna skip them until we find the middle stitch right here. We make a fan on top of that. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, the find the middle double crochet and make a one double crochet in top there. And again, this is my fan, middle stitch, and I make my fan. Skip the rest of the fan right here, and I have one, two, and three double crochets. And I make one on top of each of them. And a corner. And I keep going, uh, making the back part. So from now on, it is all repeat. Okay, so finish that row and I'm gonna see you right here. So these two parts always have to be the same, this and this. It has to have the same amount of double crochets before starting the pattern right here and after it. Uh, the same on both sides. I'm gonna meet you at the end of this row and we will see where the last stitch is going. Uh, other than that, this is just repeat, repeat, repeat until our yoke, which we are going to measure here, uh, is big enough for us to connect. I am at the end of row three and I have two stitches left. So the very last stitch, our, our very last stitch will be the chain one that we do in the beginning of every row. So we're gonna go in under it, not like into the middle of it to connect, but under. It's a full stitch right here. Just don't forget, sometimes it is uh, a little bit smaller and it could be turning uh, to the other side, uh, just so that you don't forget. Anyway, you will see that it is not straight here and it is missing a stitch. I just want to make sure that you know where it goes, like that. Then again, you get to chain one, you turn around, and you keep doing exactly the same. So repeat, repeat, repeat. And I will meet you once I have uh, finished the top part, uh, meaning I'm done with the yoke. It's big enough and long enough and wide enough for the child of that age that I'm making to fit. Uh, and I will show you then what we have to measure uh, to know if it does fit or not. Now, I will remind throughout the cardigan to not forget about the buttonholes. Like I said, it's so easy to forget and then it is just very, very annoying uh, to pull it all out. But for now, we just keep going. It will get longer. It will get higher. It will get bigger in all of it. Okay, so I have my yoke done and I'm ready to connect it. Uh, we will do the measuring in a minute. Uh, two things that I wanted to mention. So the buttonholes, as you can see right here, I have five solid rows in between them. So one, two, three, four, five, and then a buttonhole. And then again will be one, two, three, four, five, and a buttonhole in the next row. So just like that. Uh, the second thing that uh, I'm doing, I am doing a little bit of co color control. So I'm just cutting out uh, a little bit of yarn from my cake, as you can see. So the colors are changing a little bit faster on the top. Uh, otherwise, I will ha would have, like you can see how much purple I have cut out. I would have a whole lot of purple on the top because the rows are shorter up here. And the rows will be longer on the bottom, so I would have much less purple. I just wanted to control it a, a tiny little bit. Okay, so uh, now we can do the measuring. I am going to get my measuring chart. 
Okay, so the first measurement that we are going to have a look at is the yolk measurement. So this is that. This is the line right here. Okay, so I am making this size. So I find the yolk is 14 centimeters. The bigger the size, the bigger the measurement. The smaller the size, the smaller the measurement. So I have 14 and I measure. So when you measure the yolk, uh, find the corner from the top going all the way down and we're going to measure that. Now at this point, just I'm just gonna put it at the very top and I'm just gonna measure. My yolk measures 13 centimeters. I need 14. The thing is, the next row, when we are going to connect, is going, you see I have started here, is going to have a double crochet in that very corner, which is going to add that extra little length that I need for it. I don't want it to be too big, so I'm leaving uh, the next row to finish, to finish the length for me. So you can see, when I'm going to have a double crochet here, it's going to reach my 14 centimeters. Now, I would not recommend you to do it any shorter uh, than it says on the chart, because it might be a little bit too close to the armhole. So just make sure that you definitely reach that uh, measurement once you connect it. Okay, so that's one. So I know that my this part is long enough. Now we need to figure out the chest measurement. So we look up the chest finished. So that is for the cardigan for the finished uh, cardigan. Because this has a, some a few extra centimeters from the actual chest measurement. So it has a little bit space for the child to move in it. Okay, so my uh, size is this and I find that it is 58 centimeters completely completely like this around the whole cardigan now as we have an overlap here in the front uh, this will not be very accurate so we are going to measure a half and only in the back so I'm going to divide my 58 uh, by 2 and I am going to have uh, 29 centimeters for this part right here okay so i'm going to measure now i am measuring out so start from one side right here and measure to the other side right here so from the start of one corner like this from the very close here to the other corner right here. So I have about uh, 26 and a half centimeters. I need 29, so I'm missing two and a half centimeters. Now I'm gonna figure out how many chains I have to do under both armholes. Uh, so that would I, the, that those chains would cover those two and a half missing centimeters. So as I already have um, uh, some double crochet row here, it's going to be the same here. I'm just gonna measure and see how many double crochets fit in those two and a half centimeters. So I put my measuring tape from the start of one of double crochets, and now I'm gonna count. So one, two, three, and four. You see? Right here. One, two, three, four. Four double crochets fit into those two and a half centimeters that I'm missing from uh, the chest measurement. So that means I'm going to put four chains under both armholes, like that. Okay, so once we have figured that out, we need to get ourselves to the very first corner. It doesn't matter which side you're on, just get yourself to the first corner. Okay, so last double crochet. And this is my corner. I'm gonna make a double crochet in there like this and now I'm going to make my four chains so one two three and four I'm gonna find 
my next corner make sure it's not twisted like this and I'm going to make a double crochet in here into that space and for now I'm gonna keep going with one double crochet into each stitch until I do the whole back and I will meet you back here I am on the other side of the back and I will do exactly the same I'm gonna make a double crochet in the corner I am going to chain four one two three and four find the next corner and I will just make a double crochet and I will keep going to the end of this row so we have our yoke connected now and it will start looking a bit more like a cardigan at the moment which is great that is what we want so don't forget your buttonholes if you might need uh, to do them uh, for now I will just finish this row chain one turn around and I will meet you right here and we'll see what to do with those chains under the armholes I am at my chains and the only thing we have to do now is we have to put one double crochet into each chain we're gonna yarn over and go into the middle of the chain because we were going to need uh, to use that one or two strands whichever way uh, you put your hook in, into the chain to co connect the sleeves uh, to so one double crochet into the middle of each chain so I had four chains I get double crochets and then again we just keep going so I'm going to uh, finish this row I'm gonna show you how I change my colors uh, maybe it's a little bit too late in the project to show but I will still do that uh, and then we will figure out what we have to do after this okay so I'm at my last stitch right here and I'm gonna do a color change now or a color control so I'm gonna chain one I'm gonna cut off my yarn leave a little bit longer tail and I'm gonna pull out the hook so if you look closely I have all my color changes all my left uh, over tails right here on the side with no buttonholes so it will hide and you will not be able to see those uh, color changes at all so it looks like this okay so I'm gonna grab my cake and I'm gonna quickly take all that very beautiful light blue color out of the cake I'm gonna do it uh, I think off camera because there's a little bit left there okay so I found the spot where my colors is changing so I'm going from blue to green I'm just gonna cut here and I'm not gonna throw out this yarn I'm gonna use it either on the bottom of the cardigan or for the sleeves uh, the same color so grab the next one I'm gonna make a slip knot I'm gonna go into that very first stitch and I'm going to chain one and double crochet and I will just keep going in this color all exactly the same and I'm just going to hide those tail ends at the end when I'm finished okay so for now we need to keep doing that waist uh, part before we start the skirt so how long to crochet now before the skirt okay so if we look at our measuring chart or the size chart we find the back neck to waist measurement okay so this is for me 21.8 centimeters the bigger the size the bigger the measurement the smaller the size the smaller so i have 21.8 centimeters before uh, I start uh, no sorry not before I, I need to measure that out okay so 21.8 and I am going to measure from the top of the shoulder like this down so I am at 17 centimeters so I'm just gonna keep going back and forth until I am about here so about 
21 and a half. It depends on uh, how your rows are lying and how much they're taken up. I'm going to try to get uh, as close to about 22, 21 and a half centimeters as, as I can. And then I'm going to start the bottom part. But for now, we remember our buttonholes and we just keep going back and forth until we reach that part right here. Okay, so I have the whole bottom part finished now. I'm going to measure. I'm looking to, to be about uh, 21 and a half, 22 centimeters, 21.8. So it's about 21 and a half, 22 centimeters in length from the shoulder to where I have finished right now. And this is where I'm going to start the bottom part. Okay, so uh, get your stitch markers and count your stitches how many stitches you have all the way around so i have 91 stitches and you should have uh, an odd number as well uh, that is because we need to have one stitch in the very very middle of the back and this is where we are going to start uh, counting where we are going to put our stripes of this pattern Okay, so count your stitches and then divide them by two. So I had 91 stitches. So if I divide 91, I get 45.5. Okay, so that 0.5 is the very middle stitch. <laughs> I'm not trying to confuse you. Okay, so I'm going to have 45 stitches. I'm going to count from one side and number 46 I am going to mark. And it will be the same. I'm going to have 45 on one side, 45 on the other side. And that one stitch, that one odd number will be the very, very middle of my cardigan. And that is where I'm going uh, to mark it. Okay, so I'm going to do this off camera. Find that very, very middle. My very, very middle stitch. I have 45 stitches that way and 45 stitches that way. Okay, so... Um, this is where we are going to have to um, do a little bit of counting, just a tiny little bit. So first I'm just going to try, um, let's say, it depends on how big you are making it and how much space do you want them to be apart, those little stripes. So I'm just going to start with uh, 10 stitches in between my markers and then I'm going to see if I want to move them uh, each way uh, to make the uh, sorry <laughs> uh, to make this part in between uh, those stripes smaller or bigger okay so I'm gonna try start with 10 stitches in between so from the middle I'm counting one way one two three four five six seven eight nine and 10. I'm going to mark the number 10. Then the next one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to mark that. And one more, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, so it, that is good. I actually like this. So if I put my cardigan as it should be. I don't want the last one or the first one, whichever way you look at it from the edge, to be too close because when it's, when I'm gonna close it over, I don't want it to be very close to the edge. So a little bit to the side is fine. So I have, I'm, I am marking stitch number 10. So I'm gonna do this exactly the same to the other side from the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So if you don't like how, where your stripes are going to be, uh, you can always move them more. You can leave bigger spaces more space in between the markers uh, depending on like i said the bigger the cardigan that you are making probably you will have bigger gaps in between your markers as this is not a very big cardigan i'm having smaller gaps
Okay, so this is the way you figure out where your um, stripes are going to be. And then we are going to start that. Now, first of all, I'm going to get myself uh, to the one stitch before my marker. It doesn't matter which way you are going. Uh, so I'm going to stop. I'm going to make double crochets, simple double crochets, up to the uh, one stitch before the marker. Okay, so as you can see, I have one stitch before the marker left. So this is the stitch where I'm going to put my very first fan in. I'm not going to skip uh, any stitches or anything. I want this to be a big increase right here. So the stitch before the marker gets a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet all in that one stitch I'm gonna take my stitch marker out instead of the stitch marker I'm gonna put one double crochet in there this is the middle stitch so as we made right here that very middle stitch mid middle double crochet that is the one we just made and into the stitch after I'm going to put another fan so one double crochet chain one two double crochets chain one and three double crochets so this is the pattern so we just literally squeezed in uh into three stitches al although they would normally take 11 so this is a big increase and this is what's going to happen with all our stitch markers so now I am going to put one double crochet into each stitch until I get uh, to the next stitch marker. Well, one stitch before the marker with just normal double crochets. So right here. And again, I can see my stitch marker, the stitch before I put in a fan. So double crochet chain double crochet chain and double crochet take the stitch marker out instead into that stitch i'm gonna put one double crochet and then in the next stitch i'm gonna put a fan again double chain double chain and double and again one double crochet into all the next stitches until you get uh, to the to that last stitch before the stitch marker so I'm gonna show this one more time okay so that stitch before the marker and I make a fan so fan take the stitch marker out double crochet instead of that uh, fan after into the next stitch and then just double crochets again until you get to the one stitch before the marker and this is what i am going to do for this whole row uh, nothing changes so then you're gonna go to the end chain one turn around and I'm going to meet you at the first sort of a cluster of our fans right here. And we will see where we have to do the stitches again. So all just like that. Turn around and I'll meet you right here. So I am on the row two of the bottom part right here. So now, first of all, we need to make out where our fans are so this is my first fan this is the one double crochet in between and this is the second fan so i need to make double crochets without uh, making double crochets into the fan so this is the fan this is the stitch from the first double crochet i'm gonna leave that so i have one stitch left like this so next find that middle stitch from the fan 
and make a fan on top of it, like we did before. Chain one and double crochet. Then we need to figure out where our that one double crochet is in between the fans. It could be a little bit hard to make out. So this is a double crochet right here. Oh, sorry, the fan right here. And this is the one double crochet in between them. I'm gonna make one double crochet on top, yarn over, find that other fan, and make a fan on top. Next, we figure out where the bottom fan is ending. So this stitch is from that double crochet from the fan. And I'm gonna start right here, just behind it. And we keep double crocheting until we get to the next stripe of the fans and the double crochet there. So you need to look carefully. So I have a double crochet here and then again. So this is the fan. This is the stitch from the fan and I have one more before right here. Yarn over, find that middle from the fan, the middle top stitch, double crochet, chain, double crochet, chain, and double. Find that one double crochet in between fans, make a double crochet on top. Find the second fan right here and make another one on in the middle stitch. So pretty much as we did on the sleeves, it's just a little bit harder to see them now because they are all squashed together. So make out your fan. So this stitch is from the fan. I'm gonna skip that. I'm gonna go into the next double crochet. And just keep making double crochets <clears throat> until you get to the next one. Okay, so then again, try to pull them out. It will it will be easier to see. So my fan, I still have one double crochet before it. Like this, and then again, make out the middle stitch. It will get easier. This is just uh, a little bit harder to see because they are all squashed together. And we keep going. So this row, uh, this is all we do until we get to the end of it and then in the next row I'm gonna show and explain how and when we will uh, be doing the increases uh, in these rows now until we get to the very bottom. Okay so I'm ready to start the increasing. So this is row number three uh, of the bottom part. So what I'm gonna do, one more thing, look I am going to mark that First row, now you can see it very well because I have changed colors right here. So I'm just gonna mark that row that I started the bottom at. Now this marker will help us out in figuring out how often we have to do the um, increases and how long to do the cardigan as well. Well, you can do it as long as you want actually, but I will show you um, what, what I count. For that okay but before okay so we are starting to do increases now now we will do increasing in every third row so if you can see i have marked the first row that i started the bottom at so row number one row number two in no row number three i am going to do increasing then row number four no increasing row number five no increasing row number six i will increase again uh, row number seven no uh, row number eight, no. Row number nine, I will have increases again. And all increases will look exactly the same. So, find your stripe right here. You can see, fan, double, fan. Find the last double crochet before the fan. So this is the double crochet and this is the stitch from it. Get to that stitch before the fan. So this one right here. And make two double crochets in it. That last stitch, ok, 
get two double crochets before the fan. Then make your normal uh, fan. Double crochet and fan again. And the very first double crochet after the fan. So this is where the fan ends. So don't crochet in this. This is the stitch from this double crochet. Find the next one and make two double crochets in it. So we will increase just before the first of the uh, the first uh, fan and straight after the second fan on all of our stripes on every stripe so then you just make one double crochet in between then again this is my fan, this is the last double crochet before it, and I make two double crochets here. One and the second one in the same stitch. Then my normal pattern. Double crochet on top of the middle double crochet. My fan. And again, find the first double crochet after. So this is the fan, this stitch is from that double crochet. Find the next one and put two double crochets in here. And then one double crochet in between until you get to the next stripe. Okay, so this is all now repeat, repeat, repeat. Uh, don't forget your buttonholes if you are making them. So. Find your next stripe, the stitch before gets two, and the stitch after gets two, and increase, 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 and like this every third row. So like I said, I have marked the first row, so row number three gets increased, row number six gets increased, uh, row number nine, twelve, fifteen, and so on and so on, whatever length that you are doing. Okay. Uh, so we need to keep going now. Uh, now how long to make? Really however long you want it to make. Now the only thing that I do is I count uh, how many rows I did before starting the bottom. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I'm gonna do 15 rows plus about 3 more. Uh, 2 or 3 more. So. 15 to here and about 15 plus 2 to the bottom before I will start uh, the edging on the bottom that is a minimum because that way if you get the same amount of rows it will look proportionate but you can always make it shorter or longer if you want so for now that is it don't forget your increases don't forget your buttonholes if you still have to do them and I will meet you at the bottom of the cardigan so you will be able to see uh, how long I made it and how it looks like okay I think I think that's it for now I'll I'm gonna see you soon I have my bottom part finished it looks a bit like this so you remember you can always make it longer or shorter depending on what you like and I have two rows left so this row we're gonna fill in that pattern here we're only gonna have a solid row on the bottom and then we're gonna add the edge on the next one okay so get yourself to the to the our first fan just normal double crochets and when you get there so this is my first fan I'm gonna make a half double crochet in the first stitch from the fan so yarn over put your hook into that stitch pull it out you have three loops yarn over and pull through all three loops half double crochet then 
I'm gonna do a single crochet in that first chain space single crochet then single crochet on the top of the fan single crochet again in the chain space half double crochet in the stitch for the last double crochet from the first fan then half double crochet in in the middle stitch half double crochet in the first stitch from the second fan single crochet in the one, chain one space single crochet in the top of the middle fan stitch single crochet in the chain one space and a half double crochet into the last one so this is how we're gonna fill it in and it's just going to be nice and straight edge then I'm gonna show it one more time so I'm gonna just double crochet to the next to my next two fans oops I have double crochet just like that and we get to the next set of fans so again Start with a half double crochet in the first double crochet stitch, then three single crochets, single crochet one, single crochet two, single crochet three, one, two, and three, then three half double crochets. So first here, second and third. The three middle stitches in between those fans or in the very middle of that pattern get three half double crochets then three single crochets one two and three and a half double crochet to finish and then double crochets as normal so this is all we're gonna do in the second last row we're just filling in the bottom And so the very last thing we're going to do on the bottom is a little edge, very simple, just to make it a little bit more, uh, I don't know, fun, I suppose. Okay, so what I do is I'm going to chain one, I'm going to turn around. And I'm going to put a single crochet back into the same chain as the, cha as the chain one is coming out of, sorry, the same stitch. I'm going to chain two, one and two. I'm going to yarn over and put a double crochet back into the same space. I'm going to skip one stitch, go into the next one, make a single crochet, chain two, and a double crochet. Skip one, make a single crochet, chain two, and a double crochet. Skip one, single crochet, chain two, double crochet into the same stitch. Skip one, single crochet, chain two, and a double crochet. And this is all that I am going to do on the bottom of this cardigan. Now, I don't mind which way uh, my bottom uh, edge is facing. It looks beautiful both ways. So we just keep doing that until we finish all of the bottom at the end of this row I have three stitches left and I am just gonna skip two this time and finish with a single crochet if you have two left then just skip one uh, I had uh, three so I skipped two I'm gonna chain one I'm gonna cut my yarn and I am done with the bottom. I will uh, hide the tails later. And this is how my bottom looks at the moment. Okay, so now we're gonna do the top uh, real quick. It is very similar to what we did in the bottom. 
uh, I'm gonna make a slip knot. Uh, the only thing that I want to do is I want to slip stitch right here in the two fronts. That is because I don't want that very first buttonhole to be very low. Because if I do that uh, the same as I did in the bottom there, I will have a very high top. So I'm just going to slip stitch. If you like to do the, the same as we did in the bottom right here, it is no problem at all. You can just do that. So I'm going to find the very first stitch. Put my hook, oh sorry, the other way around, like this. And I am now going to slip stitch. So I'm going to slip stitch into those, you see in the top here, this is what's left from our starting chain. So I'm just going to put my hook into the next one, catch the yarn, pull it out, and pull it out. Into the next one. Pull it out. I'm just gonna do a slip stitch into each of those. D not, uh, try to not make it too tight, so it's not um, so it's not uh, losing its length in in the front here. Okay, and so I go to my first corner. So I'm going to start the same edging now that we did on the bottom. The only thing is we will be skipping two, um, two chains, let's say, uh, for this one. Okay, so the first time I'm only going to skip one corner. I'm going to go, uh, so you can see, this is where the corner was. So I'm going to skip just one. I'm going to, into the next one make a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet. Now it will be a little bit harder to understand what is where because these are only chains, uh, but try to do your best. So these were two chains, I'm gonna skip them, I'm gonna go into the middle of that, make a single crochet, I'm gonna chain two, and make a single crochet. Then again I have the two chains, I'm gonna skip that, Again, skip two chains or two stitches, whatever you have there. You might have it differently because we you might have had a different uh, amount of chains on the top than me. And then again, chain two, double crochet. I'm gonna skip two and keep going skip two again I'm gonna skip two And this is what we are going to do until we get back to the very front. So do the same right here and I'm going to meet you back here and we're going to finish with a slip stitch in and we will have our neckline done. Okay, so I'm at my last corner right here. So this is the front, that's all I have left. And I have two stitches left this time. So stitch one and the corner stitch. I'm just gonna skip over both of them and I'm just gonna go straight after and start slip stitching like this. Okay, so I finished that. I'm gonna chain one. I'm gonna cut my yarn. I'm gonna pull that out. And I'm just gonna quickly see. 
So this is how the neckline looks like. I think that is very cute. Just like this. Okay, so we have two things left to do. One of the hardest things, well, it is technically, it's not hard. It's just difficult for me to show because there's a lot of color and a lot of stitches and everything. But it's really quite easy. So we have to do a sleeve and perhaps a little belt or something uh, for a little decoration or to actually have some use. Okay, so I'll be back in two seconds and we will start on the sleeve first. So the sleeve, okay, so I have one made like this, as you can see. Uh, first thing that we need to figure out is how long sleeve we should make. So sleeve length, for my size, it's 21 centimeters. And there you can see the other sizes. So I have 21 centimeters. Now the sleeve is uh, measured from the armhole to the end of the sleeve. So if you put it there, can't get it right. Okay, so I have about 20, 21 centimeters, perhaps a little bit longer if I pull on it. Okay, so this is how you measure the length. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the pattern here. Perhaps we will do uh, a couple of decreases. We'll see, we'll measure the, uh, the inside of the sleeve to see uh, we really don't want the sleeve to be too wide. And then at the bottom, we are gonna change the hook size, uh, do a little bit decreasing before we start the uh, front post and back post double crochet rows right here. But we will get all uh, all through that together. Okay, so find the sleeve, whichever one that you are going to make. I have this one. Okay. So you need to find the bottom of it. Now, depending on how many chains you did uh, under the armhole, I did four. So it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to aim for one, uh, one of the middle ones. If you have made an odd number, you will have one in the very, very middle. That one uh, is the one that I would choose. So another thing is we need to figure out which way to go. So I have ended on the double crochet row which is the wrong side out. If you can see the difference between the two rows is one row looks like this. This is the right side up. This row, you see with a, it sort of a, has, I don't know, uh, two little strands here. Maybe this, this way will be easier for you to, uh, to see it. So this is the wrong way up, the right side up and the wrong side up. Now, if if you have, like me, the wrong side up on the last row, you are gonna go from the bottom on the outside like this. If you have the right side up here, you will start at the bottom and you will sort of go from the inside of the sleeve. So either like this or like this that it will all it will only uh, be a you only need to see this for the very first row so we keep the same stitches going okay so I'm gonna connect in one of the, my, my middle uh, chains here I'm gonna chain two this is uh, we, all, we are always going to chain two but we're not gonna count that as, as a stitch I'm gonna yarn over now if you are going on the inside of the sleeve you need to turn around and make that first double crochet in the same chain that your chain two is coming out of right here now because i'm going the other way i do not need to turn around and i'm gonna yarn over and go into the same chain and i'm gonna make a double crochet then fill in any other uh, chains if you have at the bottom so i have one more on this side then it doesn't matter which way you are going you're gonna have a double crochet here make one double crochet in the bottom 
and one double crochet in the top of it. Then you're gonna have a space from the last corner that you have made. You put your hook in there and make a double crochet. And after that you have stitches going all the way up to the first fan. So just use every stitch and make a double crochet. Oops. Okay, so as you can see, I have one double crochet left before my first fan. I just make a normal double crochet. And then I just make my fan as I did before in the top of that middle stitch from the last fan, double chain, double chain, and double the one double crochet in the in between the two fans then i finish that other fan my second one and i just keep double crocheting so this is the double crochet to the bottom so uh do that i'll meet you a little bit closer to the bottom somewhere around here I have one more double crochet left I do this double crochet then again I have the corner from the other side I make a double crochet here I have the double crochet right here which I have connected my yoke with so I make a double crochet in the top of it another one in the bottom of it and then I just uh, make double crochets in any of the chains that I have left in the bottom I have two more left I crochet two that way and I have two more left right here so one and two and now we're gonna connect uh, so these are the one chain two chains that we did we are skipping over them and we're slip stitching into the very first stitch on the top like this. I'm going to chain two and I will be turning around. Now the only thing that I want uh, to see if my sleeve is not too wide. Okay, so put it like this. Then we're going to look up the upper sleeve for the size that you're making so upper sleeve for the size that I'm making it is 10 about 10.5 centimeters I am going to measure the inside of the sleeve it might be a little bit tricky I just put it inside and I measure I see so I have about 11 and a half centimeters in the inside of my sleeve. I need it to be a bit closer to 10.5. This is a little bit uh, wide for me. Now, when doing decreases for the sleeve, we need to do a decrease on each side of the chain too, meaning that we need to make a decrease uh, in the beginning and in the very end. That is because uh, if we only do a decrease on one side, uh, our um, pattern will sort of a turn a little bit. Now, one decrease will not do a lot of uh, damage. You will uh, perhaps you will not be able to see that, but when uh, because I want to keep my this pattern perfectly on the middle of the sleeve, that is why I'm gonna do two decreases: one here and one on the other side when I'm coming back. Okay, so now uh, I chain two. I'm gonna turn around. I will keep turning my rows. Okay, so once you turn around, 
Find that tiny little space right here next to the chain 2. Whichever way you are going, it will be in the front of you. Just in the front of chain 2. So go in there and make a double crochet. Then the next two stitches, this is where I'm going to do my decrease. If you are not doing decreases, then just make double crochets as you did before. Uh, so I'm going to yarn over, go into the first stitch, pull the yarn out, yarn over and pull through two loops. I'm going to leave it alone for now. I'm going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, catch the yarn, pull it out. I have four loops. Yarn over, pull through two. I have three left. And yarn over and I'm going to pull through all of these loops. So I only have one stitch left instead of two. Now I'm going to double crochet to my first fan. Uh, I'm going to show the fan again one more time, just in case, I don't know, just in case somebody uh, needs to make sure that they, they are doing it correctly. But uh, uh, you can do more decreases if you like, if you need that, if your sleeve is very, very long. I would just su suggest that you perhaps uh, make one row or two rows in between the decreases, uh, just so your sleeve is not wide and then goes really quickly decreasing. So this is my fan. I'm just following the stitches. And one more fan. And into the double crochet from the previous row and I will keep going. I'll meet you at the end of this row. I will do the last decrease and we will see where our last stitch is. So I want to decrease my very two last stitches again. Remember, in one side a decrease and on the other side. So now we will not crochet into this stitch ever. If you look really closely, that stitch right here, it's not a stitch. You can see the chain two is coming that strand is coming out of it. We are leaving this alone, otherwise we will do an increase. So always look the very last stitch before the chain two. Make sure uh, that it, uh, you know, if, if it has the little strand there, you leave that alone. So my last two stitches are here and I'm gonna do a decrease again. Like this, I'm gonna skip the two chains and go in the top of the stitch and I'm gonna do a slip stitch okay so I will do a color change now just because I am controlling my colors a little bit more on the sleeves uh, because I want them to be a bit more even so if you are not changing colors that you are then you are chain chaining two you are turning around Make your first double crochet right in the front of your chain two, right here. And then if you look closely, this is not the stitch again. This is where the chain two is coming out of. You leave that alone. This is your last stitch. And you just keep going, do your pattern. But as I am changing colors, so what I'm going to do, just in case somebody is and wants to see that, I'm going to chain one. I'm going to find my scissors and I'm going to leave a little bit longer end and I'm going to pull that out. I'm getting my next color. I'm going to make a slip knot and now as I am I will be going that way around the sleeve. You can see the knot right here so remember that stitch that we are not using this one for just for the color changing when I'm do, I'm going to connect in front, oh sorry, in the back of the uh, knot right here, you see, this and this, 
we only need to use one of them but as we are connecting we can uh, we can use Oh, I, I'm try. I, I'm afraid I will confuse you. Okay, so just connect behind the knot and start make your first double crochet in in the other side of the knot, and then just keep going for the whole row as you would do normally, and this time you will just end up normally. In the very last stitch but that is only if you are uh, changing colors I hope I did not uh, mix you up I always like to talk a lot I hear that a lot okay so for now we just keep going with the pattern wherever it is taking us uh, we see the stitches and we are gonna do that until we are about four centimeters short from the full sleeve length Okay, so we need about four centimeters. Uh, now, if, if you're using different yarn, uh, you might get uh, one, one less row or something. It doesn't matter. We just need to leave a, a good, well, a bit of space here for the bottom part. You can always uh, make one less row of the front and post uh, uh, double crochets or even uh, one more if you are still missing the length. Okay, so I'm gonna meet you uh, at the when I am about so if my sleeve is 21 centimeters long I'm gonna do about 17 and this is where I'm gonna meet you So I am at 17 centimeters. I still have four centimeters to go and this is where I'm going to do my decreasing now decreasing will be very easy we are just gonna do it over here where the pattern is so for now we are just adding it as a normal row and we need to get ourselves to that last double crochet before the fans are starting last double crochet before the fan and now I'm going to skip that double crochet from the fan and go in into the chain one space and make a half double crochet. I'm going to skip that middle one, go into the chain space and make a half double crochet. I'm going to go straight for the middle stitch and make a half double crochet here. Again, chain space of the other sp uh, fan half double crochet and again the last space with the chain one from the second fan gets a half double crochet after that I start with normal double crochets until I get to the bottom of the sleeve to the end of the sleeve well, and finish that row so here we have uh, decreased by six stitches just right here so I'll see you at the bottom and we will start the front and back post double crochet row. I'm going to connect as normal with a slip stitch and this is where I'm going to change my hook size. So I'm leaving my 4 millimeter hook and I take a 3.5 millimeter, just a slightly smaller one. I'm going to chain two, yarn over and I'm going to start with front post double crochets. Now you see that double crochet right here next to the chain. We're going to skip that. We're going to go for the for the next one. Right here. Go in between the two stitches in the back and come out like this. Yarn over, pull your yarn out and make a double crochet. That's a front post double crochet. Yarn over, go from the behind of the sleeve. Oh, sorry, uh from the middle of the sleeve or the inside in between the two stitches grab it around on the other side grab the yarn pull it out and make a double crochet front post again and back post and this is all we're gonna do uh, we are just gonna do front and back post double crochets all the way around. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, I just want to quickly get to those half double crochets that we did with the decrease. Um, it's it's really nothing uh, different from this. Just want to show you that it's a slightly shorter stitch. So, but other than that, you do exactly the same as right here. So. And I'm doing the half doubles now. You see, these are the half double crochets. I still do a double crochet. Just, just make sure that you grab it because it is a smaller, a shorter stitch. And a front post. Okay, so just like that, we keep going until we get to the starting spot. Okay, so once you make the last post double crochet whichever it is front or back you need to find those chain two right here they might be lying down a little bit find the top of that chain go into it and make a slip stitch and then again chain two and keep making your front and back post double crochets as they are just follow follow them which one is which and I'm going to do that for another, uh, so this row and another one. Uh, but if you're using thicker yarn, you might get to, the, to your measurement uh, a little quicker than me. So you need to measure and see when you will get there. Okay, so I, uh, nothing else really to show. So you come back and you uh, connect and then do another one if you need it. So I'm going to meet you once I have the... Uh, end of my sleeve done and we'll see what we have left to do so once you finish you 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 connect you're gonna chain one and cut your yarn leave the tail a little bit longer so you can hide that easily and pull that out just make sure before cutting the yarn uh, that you have the length full length for the sleeve okay so I'm gonna quickly show you uh, how I hide my tails just I'll just show you two of my tails okay so the one I am going straight in into those chains right here it's gonna hide itself beautifully and back up that is going nowhere that is done and I'll show you one more. Um, this one, where we do, where we did the uh, slip stitches. This is quite important because it's it ha does not have a knot. It has to be uh, very well um, sewn in. It's gonna go in behind the stitches and in the inside of the cardigan. I'm gonna make a little knot right now. So. Um, Keeping the loop, going back into it, and I have a little knot. And it is now going absolutely nowhere. Make sure you cannot see it on the other side. And so we are very close to the end now. Um, <clears throat> for, for those who want a belt, just like me, we need to sew in the ends and uh, to have the buttons sewn in the front which uh, this is what I'm going to do right now and then I'm gonna meet up with you and we're gonna do a little belt right here for it buttons are in uh, the tails are sewn and this is how it looks so far so it is a finished cardigan if you want but I will do I will show the little uh, belt like I said okay so belt number one it's actually the same belt this one is just a very long string the same one that I'm, go that I'm going to do but it's much longer and you actually get to make a little bow or tie it up in the front so exactly the same only much longer than the one that I'm going to make and it's actually much easier too so the one that I'm going to make is this so you can't really see it a lot I'm just weaving it in in between just to keep that waist a little bit slightly cinched in and then I'm gonna sew in so the button through through the little belt onto uh, onto the cardigan itself 
So this is a little bit harder to get uh, the length of this belt right, but I'm going to try and do my best, okay? Uh, so get your yarn, the one that you are going to use. Uh, for the belt. And I'm going to use some pink. I'm going to make it in pink. And make a slip knot. And just chain. Now, how much to chain? This is the hard part. Uh, because uh, once we're going to do the slip stitches into that chain, the the length of the chain is going to decrease a lot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you if I make a really, really long chain, a much longer than I need, I'm going to show you how we can cut it off once we reach uh, the length that we actually need. So for, first of all, just start chaining whatever you need to chain. I'm not going to even count. I'm just going to go... Um, Make it really long, actually much longer probably than I uh, need, just to be sure that I don't need to pull it all out and start again because it is a lengthy process. Okay, so um, chain a lot. Okay, so I think I have enough of the chain. It's it's very long. Uh, it's probably twice as long as I actually need it to be. Okay, uh, and if you are making the belt that you can tie up in the front you have to make it even longer because your belt will have to have actually enough length to make the little tie in front okay so this might be a little bit of a uh, you know you, you try it once and then you see what happens if it's too short then you have to do it again okay so you see your chains right here as you would normally make if you turn them around you see the little bumps in the back it's like uh, one strand running in the middle of those chains, right here, like that one. This is where we're going to make our slip stitches. So go in there and make a slip stitch into that bump and a slip stitch. So this actually takes a, a long time. It's kind of a slow. But it makes a nice little rope. Okay, so now you just keep going. I'm going to do this uh, for a little while. Uh, and then before I actually finish, I'm going to start weaving it in. Just so I don't do more work than I need to do. I will all show you. So I'm going to get a little bit done and I'll come back. Okay, so I have a good little bit made and I'm going to start weaving it in. So I want my button to be right here on the top of the first uh, stripe. And I want it to be in the row that is the last row before we started the bottom. So I have it in yellow color. So this is where I'm going to start weaving from so I'm gonna oh I think this side is will be a little bit easier for me to start with okay so exactly the same the other side I find I'm gonna go under two stitches under two double crochets I'm gonna pull that out then again, I'm going to skip two. I'm going to go under another two. Pull that out. So actually, I think it's much easier to do it with a hook.
Okay, so I am here. I'm on the other side right here. So I'm going to pull it back. I want the very, very end of it here like that. So I'm going to sew my button on top of that. I'm going to pull that out. So I did make it a bit too long. I'm gonna get all that fixed now okay so I made it much too long at the moment I need to make sure that it is not affecting that I'm not making my um, my waist too small but I do want it to cinch my waist a little bit in I'm just gonna have a little bit of pull it's just you need to try okay it's very difficult for me to do that on camera I'm sorry but I'm gonna have to turn it off now okay so I'm gonna sew on my first button on the side that I'm absolutely sure on that I want it right here I'm sewing, sewing it through the little belt and through the cardigan. Okay, that's done. Can cut that off. And now I can cut off the excess of my string right here. So I'm going to pull back on my slip stitches. I don't need to cut that off. I can pull them out. When I get close, like this, I'm going to cut the yarn that I worked with. I'm going to pull that out, make a chain, and now I'm going to cut the chain, all the chain, the rest of the chain. I don't need it anymore, so I'm just going to cut it like one to the third chain from where I am. And now very carefully, you see, I just pull on it, and that's it. I'm going to make a little knot. And I'm going to hide those a tiny little bit. I don't need to do it a lot. Oops. Okay, so I'm gonna hide my tails and I'm gonna sew in my second um, button off camera and I will meet you then and we will see what I ended up making. Okay, and this is what I have made together with you. I really hope that you like it. I love it. I love the colors. They are very, very fun. So, just like this. 
can see my little belt coming in right here. Uh, it was a little bit more difficult to belt than, than I was hoping for, but yeah, I got through it. So I hope you like it. Um, please give me a like if, if you thought it was a good video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.